Hello, folks. I have a pretty little patch set up here, and I have made an unholy mess putting it together. Um, I want to talk about a cool thing I did here with the pressure points and the maths, but maybe I'll tell you a little bit about this patch first. It's a little bit like the Krell patch, if you've heard of that. It's a, it's a great little exercise, even if it's not quite the thing that you're into. Um, it's a great patching exercise. In this instance, uh, this fourth channel of maths is doing a lot of the work. It's being triggered by my sequencer, and the end of rise, uh, sorry, end of cycle output is going back up and triggering the sequencer. The sequencer is in random mode with uh, a major scale, so instead of getting totally random pitches, we are selecting random quantized major scale notes. Um, there's also a stepped random voltage going into the both CV input of the maths, which makes each note longer or shorter. So there's a bit of variety as it goes along, and it just plays itself. Um, sequencer triggers this goes back up and grabs another note from the sequencer, sequencer triggers it again, the end of rise triggers the sequencer, and on and on forever. Um, so what I did was while I was playing around with it and patching, um, I initially had this random voltage going into either the rise or the fall inputs so that uh, the note might fade in over a long period of time and then drop off somewhat sharply, or it would come in quickly, like it is right now, and go away slowly. But now I've set up pressure points to give the math envelopes different states. So right now we have kind of like a bell tone where it comes in quick, decays slowly, but we can also switch here. Maybe you can hear that. The notes are fading in slowly and decaying much more rapidly. We've got one here where the decay, the, the rise and the fall are both pretty slow almost like a bowed instrument. And we've got this last state where they're both pretty quick. And uh, you get that cool effect. So all that's basically happening is uh, This second channel of the pressure points is going into the rise input of the maths, and this third channel of pressure points is going into the fall, and in our first stage, we have a quick rise and a slow fall, our second stage, a slow rise and a quick fall for that sort of reverse tone, kind of like comes in, goes away. For our third stage, we have not quite equally, but we have both a, a longer rise and a fall stage. And uh, the last stage, both of them are pretty quick. So the entire sort of self-generating sequence is, uh, is happening a lot quicker. And um, I just thought it was kind of a cool idea to share. It's a great way for pressure points and maths to uh, interact with each other. And uh, 
I can I can imagine many more situations where this could be useful as a as sort of a selectable <laughs> um, state machine. Uh, you could use this for uh, rhythmic envelopes that you're using for rhythms and beats and stuff where you could have like standard snappy rhythmic envelopes and then if you were doing a performance piece you could switch in to where it sounds like the beat is reversed because you're like you're like sucking in the <laughs> the rhythms um, you could have it extra snappy or maybe decay longer uh, with like a longer decay that could almost be like a break in a song if you're using it for rhythms uh, lots of potential uses thought it might be cool to uh, to share I hope it made some sense um, it's a it's a total total messy patch I've had it going for a couple days it's been it's been real fun to um, to think about it while you're away and uh, come back to it with new ideas. That's been kind of fun. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe that maybe that'll give you some inspiration if you happen to have a maths and a pressure points or either. Uh, I hope you got something out of it. And I will see you later with more tips and ideas.